Keep it going. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, look at that branch, and it's the 4th of July. Yeah, I think our Oh, look at that. Look at that beauty. Oh, my God. Holy cow. Oh, ladies. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Guillotine Chemistry. I know it's been a while since my last video. The school year got a little away from me, but I'm back. I do appreciate your patience. Thanks for liking the videos. And of course, thanks for the channel subscriptions. That really encourages me to make more content for you. So I thought it'd be nice every now and then to highlight some of my favorite laboratory experiments. And at the top of that list is Senko Hanabe, which I often pronounce Hanabe. Uh, that roughly translates to incense stick fireworks. About a decade ago, I stumbled upon these in a summer workshop on pyrotechnics, and I've been a big fan of them ever since. Now, two important disclaimers. As the title of this video states, I am a real novice at this. After this video, I would encourage you to check out some of the links in the video description below to see how professionally produced Senko and Abi look. They are really enchanting, and I've got a long way to go before I get to that level. And disclaimer number two, due to the pyrotechnic nature of the reactants, please enjoy these as a spectator unless you have access to proper safety precautions and professional guidance. DIY fireworks are a good way to injure yourself or others. Now, a really good Senko Hanabi evokes the very Japanese idea of mono no aware, which literally translates as the pathos of things. A Senko Hanabe's brief, beautiful existence should give you a gentle sadness as you reflect on the ethereal fragility of your own life. Certainly different than its more boisterous counterpart wielded like cudgels at a typical American 4th of July gathering. Senko and Abi are actually relatively simple. The so-called three sisters of Senko and Abi are sulfur, charcoal, and potassium nitrate. Black powder fans will immediately recognize these as the main ingredients of gunpowder, so I usually keep my amounts small for testing purposes, no more than a gram. Now I use paper towels as cheap disposable weighing dishes, and then I tear out the balance to account for the mass of the paper. Tearing a balance just means that you have the balance zero out, the mass that is already on it, so it only registers new mass. Very handy. I can also tear the balance in between chemicals to save some time, the only disadvantage really being that it becomes much harder to remove ingredients if you add too much. There are a lot of suggestions for preparation and ratios out there. Most seem to focus on about 50 to 60% potassium nitrate, 10 to 20% charcoal, and then about 20 to 30% sulfur. As a chemistry teacher, I have access to laboratory-grade supplies of these. I just dump the whole mixture in a mortar and pestle and then grind it up together. Now, this could be separately. It would certainly make it a little safer, but in over a decade of doing this with Sunus, I've never had anyone grind this hard enough to ignite it. I know, famous last words. Now, I cut some tissue paper. A good place to start is a couple of inches long and no more than an inch wide. But again, this is open to robust future investigation. The tissue paper holds the black powder, but also becomes part of the reaction. I like to moisten the end of the toothpick just a little bit so the paper holds a little better at the beginning, but I try to avoid overdoing this. Once you start wrapping the tissue paper around the toothpick, a sort of natural trough will appear. And then I add about a tenth of a gram of the black powder, but like everything else, this amount should be open to investigation. I then continue to wrap the Senko, going for the tightest wrap I can make without ripping the paper itself. Too loose of a wrap and the Senko will simply flare up and burn out without any desired effect. Again, my technique here needs a lot of work. I suspect you could use water to really tighten the wrap up a lot more as long as you allowed sufficient time for it to dry out. I suspend mine from a ring stand in a fume hood, though most people just hold their Senko Hanabis. So when you burn them, the process starts with some of the tissue paper creating a glowing ember, which hopefully pulls up into the telltale dross ball. That thing is hot, burning somewhere between 800 and 900 degrees Celsius. The dross ball leads to the best part, the branching phase. Eventually, the branching phase transitions into a non-branching phase towards the end of the reaction. While the reaction is not completely understood, the sulfur does seem to hold the dross ball together, and the charcoal reacts with the potassium nitrate to produce the characteristic branching. Now, the type of charcoal used is important. Besides the carbon, there are other compounds, both organic and inorganic, that aid in the production of the branching sparks. I use lump hardwood charcoal readily available at any grilling supply store. The type and amount of tissue paper used matters, as this pyrolyzes to produce additional ash and charcoal. 
I find the toothpick tends to help out the dross ball also, but that may just be a crutch as most professional Sanko Hanabe seem to forgo the toothpick altogether. Now, why do I love this experiment? The simple reason is I love all the variables. There are just so many variables to explore, and this makes it a wonderful chemistry experiment. Think about it. You can explore the percent of charcoal, sulfur, potassium nitrate, how much black powder is used, how to distribute the black powder, the width of the tissue paper, the length of the tissue paper, even the shape of the tissue paper might be open to investigation. What kind of tissue paper do you use? How far up to toothpick do you attach the paper? Whether or not you even need a toothpick? And then finally, the all-important wrapping technique itself. This is the scientific method at its best. It's fun to tweak these variables and see what happens. The iterations are quick. The results are immediate and immensely satisfying. I mean, people love lighting things on fire. Now, if you really want to understand what happens better, you might want to check out some books, such as the seminal classic Fireworks, The Art, Science, and Technique by Takeo Shimizu, if you can find it. If there is interest in a more complete explanation of the chemical mechanisms, I can certainly try to cover some of those in a future video. Let me know in the comments below. I'll be following this up with a bonus video of some of my students' creations this year, and I'll stick at least one glorious failure in there, so you might want to check that out. Once again, thanks for the likes, thanks for sharing the video with your classmates and teachers and friends, and of course, thanks for the channel subscriptions. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can click on that little guy down there in the corner. Plus, thanks for those of you who checked out the Companion website. I'll link out to a lot of interesting supplemental material about chemistry and science in general. Thanks for watching and have a great day.